Take what you do and how you live your life seriously. It is that seriousness of purpose that I learned in that hospital bed, and I'm forever grateful for that lesson every day. I knew from that day on that I want to make something of myself and make a difference in the world. And if I can go a little off text, my parents, when we grew up, used to have the pictures in our family room of all our relatives on both sides who never made it to this country from the old country. And I'm not talking about the south side of Chicago. I'm talking about <laughs> Romania and Kiev and Palestine. And in the middle was their passports that brought them to this country. And those eyes look down upon you. And not until that moment in life and not until I lived my life did I understand what my parents were doing. And that is the importance of what we have and how lucky we are to be here in this country. And for all those people and all our family members who are not with us today or are still in another part of the world, your parents and your family members look upon you as one lucky generation. Take that with the seriousness in which they have given it to you and provided to you. I thought that'd be a somber thing to say at this moment. <laughs> It does remind me, you know, the irony of uh, growing up and a parent, you know, when you're a child, and you're, I'm reminded of that great quote, which is at 12 years old, I decided my father was a fool. By 18, I was shocked what he can learn in only six years. <laughs> we too in my house have all our photos of our family members, and I'm going to make my kids as messed up as I am in doing that. <laughs> the second lesson I want to share with you is about learning from your failures. I've been fortunate enough to found success in my life, and I know most of you will be successful as well. But that success will depend upon what you do when you fail, because you fail along the way as much as your success. And today is a moment in which you mark a success. 1992 was a good year. I joined Bill Clinton's long shot presidential campaign when he was at 3%, and I started working in a paint store in Little Rock. He was talking about hope. He wasn't from Washington, and no one thought he could win. It sounds familiar. I was named assistant to the president for political affairs in the new administration. I was on top of the world. My dream job had come true, and in a pretty good job for someone just nine years out of college. But the truth, it may have, may have, and I'm not saying it did, but it may have gone to my head just a little bit. <laughs> I probably shot off my mouth a few too many times. And I probably picked a too many, one too many fights. And before I knew it, my dream job was hanging by a thread. I was demoted. I was nearly fired. I felt terrible. And here I was thinking that I had screwed up the biggest opportunity of my life. But I didn't give up. I didn't quit. I dug in. I dug deep. And I refused to leave. But I did try to act with a little less bravado and a lot more humility. I did my best to prove that I could work well with others. And by the way, that's still a work in progress. <laughs> that's the second lesson I would like to impart, to, to learn humility and wisdom when you stumble and fail, because it will help you when you succeed. Being forced to come back from that failure is why I'm standing here today. You will have failures in your life, but it is what you do during those valleys that will determine the height of your peaks. As I always, as a student who left here, I've become on my own an uh, avid reader of American history and of Abraham Lincoln, who I think is our greatest president that ever lived. Abraham Lincoln was a series of failures throughout his life, running for office, losing, which I never liked to do, <laughs> who, while he was in president, had gone through generals repeatedly, was ridiculed, was rife with depression, but if you mark his career as the greatest president, the most amazing thing about his presidency is that he learned a lesson after every failure that allowed him to move forward and become America's greatest president, which I hope you don't share with my present boss as I get a chance to get back there. <laughs> the final lesson I want to leave with you today is the importance of serving a cause bigger than yourself. Anyone would acknowledge that America has had a tough couple years. But in the long run, America will be known not for what we've done over these last years, but what we're about to do to come back. But that will only be true if all of us do our part. 
I myself know that all too well. Just a few months ago, I was a member of Congress, and I loved it. I was working on behalf of the people I grew up with, fighting for causes I believed in, and I was, had big plans for myself in the House of Representatives as a career. I had hoped one day to become Speaker. My family, meanwhile, was happy where we were living in Chicago, where I had grown up. And then the President-elect called with what he felt was a really good idea. <laughs> My kids are too young to understand why I'm uprooting their lives to answer that call. But I try to explain to them, sometimes you have to give up something you cherish to be part of achieving something even bigger. There is a greater good beyond the walls of your own ambition. And I think your generation, as I've heard from your president and others and your own senior class speakers, your generation in this class understands this, understands this better than mine did and better than most have. In spite of what you've seen or, because, or maybe because of what you have seen, you know that apathy is simply not an option for you and you're choosing citizenship over cynicism. Last year, 35,000 young people applied for only 4,000 slots in Teach for America. The Peace Corps had three applications for every one position. AmeriCorps has had 400% increase in applications in just the last three months. A few weeks ago, President Obama signed into law a historic, bipartisan, national service bill that will make it possible for young people to serve all across America. It will create opportunities for hundreds of thousands of committed citizens to give back, make a difference by helping veterans, working in schools and hospitals, cleaning up the environment, and do their part to build a clean energy company. Whatever you do in life, I hope you will also serve however you can. You will be a better citizen for it. You will be a happier person for it. And this country will be stronger because of it. The class of 2009, I know those lessons may sound pretty straightforward, but trust me, they're gained through a lot of pain, some anguish, and some soul searching. And I hope you can learn from my mistakes as you start this new chapter in your life. Because if you have seriousness of purpose, if you find wisdom in your failures, if you give yourself to a cause greater than yourself, I know you will do great things. I know that from personal experiences. The opportunities you've had on this campus are rare and extraordinary. Yes, that means it's hard to leave, but also you're perfectly prepared to do so, to go out into this world and make a tremendous impact. I remember when I graduated. I drove home back to Chicago, did two loads of laundry, then I went out and got a job for a nonprofit political organization in the heart of Chicago. It wasn't glamorous work. I had no idea where it would lead, but I left this place eager and excited to make my mark in life. My generation had nowhere near the same kind of chance that you all have. We walked to school without shoes up that mile all the time in the middle of snow. Hot dogs were only seven cents. Because for all of you, it's a little too deep a laughter for that. I'm preparing my lines for my kids. Because for all of you, the challenges of the moment we're in, there's a silver lining to graduating at a time like this. You not only have a great responsibility to serve your country, you have an extraordinary opportunity to change it. And I'm expecting you to do that. And I, so I want to thank you. I want to congratulate you. And before I wish you good luck and Godspeed, I want to close by telling you there is going to be this doubt in your life where those who've practiced and studied engineering, a great profession, we need more of them, medicine and law, pre-med law, and you have a liberal arts education. And I will tell you, I've hired many people in my life, in many positions, I've met many people. I'd always go long on a liberal arts education. You have no idea what you have. You go out, you have confidence in what you are, what you learn, because you've earned it. I wish you the best. I wish our country the best. Godspeed and God bless you.